Hi everyone, welcome to Coding Ninjas. So uh, today we have again a very very brilliant young student, I would say, who is sort of about to get into industry. But the amount of work that he has done already, I'm sure like a lot of people who are already working in industry will be really in get inspired and hope that they are able to achieve as much as this person has already done. So we have Sharad with us. Sharad is currently a Bits Pilani final year student. Um, so okay. So kya 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 Sharad mein hai na? So Sharad Bits Pilani mein hai and he is in electronics and instrumentation. He has done a internship at Amazon as a research intern that was post third year. He has done a GSOC. He has been a GSOC. Uh, he has been part of GSOC. Uh, that was at the end of second year. He did a research inter uh, internship at Harvard, uh, which was at the end of second year as well. So GSOC and this research internship together. And he's currently doing an internship with CMU as well. And most of his work has been around machine learning. So in this video, let's try to figure out how did he achieve all of this. And along with that, uh, let's try to understand what will be like a perfect roadmap for somebody in college to achieve something in machine learning that they can eventually sort of get a career in that, right? So, hi, Sharad. Welcome to Coding Ninjas. Hello. Thanks for having me here. Absolutely. Uh, so, Sharad, uh, would love to know. Uh, really, really happy to see the amount of effort you have put in. I keep telling all my students, ki yaar kuch kar lo, sirf, uh, data structures mat karte uh, just like, like most of the people right now, right? Like they just like four years later, they have to apply for jobs and they'll start like data structures day one and they'll keep doing that for the rest of four years. Ki finally job lag jaye. And, uh, but yeah, I would love to sort of, uh, know you a little better. So first of all, help me understand that you are in electronics. How did this machine learning sort of, uh, like, this got your attention. Kya hua exactly that you sort of decided ki chalo, yaar, ye karna hai mujhe. So I think like I've always been interested in emerging technology. So I think in my first year itself, uh, we had we had like a bunch of courses which were taken by seniors. So I had a lot of exposure in different uh, kinds of things. So it's kind of like similar to the online courses that are there on platforms, but uh, you actually, you know, have some senior uh, you, who you can interact with. So I think, yeah, that was my first uh, step into machine learning. Um, okay. I did like two courses. And then after that, it was just, uh, yeah, what I was interested in exploring, what projects I found interesting, um, and so on. Yeah. Okay, okay, fair, fair. So basically, one factor you're saying is that you are at Bitspilani automatically means you have smart people around you there were some seniors who were sort of teaching and you sort of got um, so yeah so that's perfect so so before we talk about your journey in between would love to know like what's the plan ahead uh, like you're about to graduate uh, do you sort of plan to continue doing research job karne ka plan hai kya plan kya hai? so the ideal path for me is uh, doing research in industry um, but I'm hoping for, but I'm hoping to go for graduate school before doing that. Okay. So unfortunately this year, the graduate school scene has been a little bit uh, um, kind of shaky just because of deferrals and stuff. So let's see what happens. But yeah, definitely I'm going to do a PhD sooner or later. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So basically what you're saying is that Eventually, you want to be doing research in industry. Uh, you don't plan to become a professor, but you still want to, you still feel that you want to do a PhD on the way. Uh, okay, okay. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. So, did you apply this year? Uh, for graduate school? Yeah. Yeah, so I applied to a few places, but uh, so I, I still have to hear back from a few of these, but I think for a lot of, for a lot of others, what seems to have happened is there's like some 70, 80 percent def deferred admits from last year. Yeah, yeah. So that's decreased the admits a lot this sure, year. Sure, so. sure, sure. So what's the plan in between? Like, uh, for example, let's say you decide that I you want to take like a break uh, for a year before you go for your MS or PhD, right? So uh, just to be clear, like for all the audience, graduate school basically means going for masters or doing a PhD, right? Like so. Uh, undergrad and graduate so okay so if 
do you plan to do this next year what will be like this year look like so i've applied for a i've applied for a lot of positions so i'm still so i've interviewed for them and this waiting to hear back all that is in colleges universities and uh, or some of them are in industry as well the positions that you're so yeah some of them are in industry and some of them are in uh, academia okay 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 perfect right. so now we can take some clues from your like sort of journey right uh, but like if there is somebody who is in first year of college and uh, let's say that they are not as lucky as like like they don't have seniors like yours who are uh, or let's say they are not in mitspilani or they are not in iits so what does this person do to sort of uh, first of all explore machine learning and like then what is like the potential path could look like for them so there is this big uh, feeling around everybody right like that they feel that unless you do a masters unless you do a phd you cannot get a job as a machine learning engineer and uh, i think with more and more companies hiring machine learning people that's not really true so would love to sort of understand from you that what could a potential journey look like for an undergrad uh, to explore machine learning so i think uh, so I, i'll say that it did not matter for me uh, that you know i had like a lot of seniors uh, so yeah of course it gave me a little push but everything i had to do on my own so so what 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 the difference might only be that you know you might have a guided path a more guided path but to be honest i'll say that you know you can receive this kind of guidance when you reach out to anyone even on linkedin nowadays it does yeah. not matter uh, it does not matter you know if you don't have seniors or whatever um so for me you know it kind of started with just uh, this initial push then i started doing online courses of course andrew and g's course then i think it was so it was mostly out of interest that i took projects so i did a lot of projects uh, so one was on drone navigation which was i think like one of my kind of capstone projects because uh, it actually it was like a major factor in the internship that i got at harvard so and i think at the end of the day what matters is how much depth you go into in a particular project and how much understanding you have of that topic the more understanding that you develop for a particular topic um it it enables you to tackle other things uh, better so so the point is that uh, you know rather than doing a lot of the shallow thing or like a breadth first uh, search over you know a lot of things i'll say that uh, uh, go depth first and then uh, you know keep on adding topics to keep on adding things on your resume so and that will just make your resume set apart from everyone else when you have things to talk about put in depth there'll be less people to appreciate but the people who appreciate it will appreciate it a lot right 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 so how how do how does somebody try to like sort of approach projects right like which projects to work with or like how do i find these projects that i want to work with and keeping in mind that i am not at bits pilani right like i'm not i don't have these professors who might be doing all these work right like i do i'm not at iit where like i have these professors who are working on these projects which i can potentially work along with so how do i get the right projects what, what do i do yeah so uh, again i think bits goa is maybe now it's it has like some pretty good professors and you know researchers but i think four years back it was not a lot so it, most of it you know it was just uh, Yeah, a lot of these tech companies, you know, they'll have. So the good thing about machine learning, in particular, is that uh, a lot of these researchers or you know, uh, industrial companies will open source their codes, open source their projects. They will talk about their projects. They will have videos, so many things, right? So, so I used to just end up, you know, watching these videos, uh, going through blogs, and so I, I used to use an app which, 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 you know. Uh, uh, like put together lots of blogs and then i used to just you know select okay yeah, this seems interesting and then i just used to read it. so i think the drone navigation project was was actually it actually came from this and it was from a project done by nvidia uh, it it was i think uh, what they were trying to do was uh, trail classification so basically you know if you're if you're a hiker then how do you make your drone follow you and then uh, basically you know uh, so you have a trail in the forest right so basically just you know yeah. follow you on the trail so the whole project was actually motivated from a blog by nvidia and their code was completely open source so i just thought that you know i just want to do this i mean um 
So I just, you know, uh, I had to, you know, draft a couple of some proposals for, uh, because I had to get like some hardware and stuff. So I had to reach out to my department if they could fund me and stuff. So they did that. They did that because, uh, so what you, what you'll often see is that, that students don't really do that, that, you know, um, nobody will spend up, spend so much time writing a proposal and stuff. So, so the, as, as I said, it's about the depth. So once you start, you know, once you just have it in your mind that, yeah, you, you want to do this. And it was just out of, you know, intellectual curiosity and uh, inquisitiveness. Mm -hmm. So, so then I got, so yeah, so I was given the funding, which is not a lot. But uh, basically, you know, it got me the hardware that I wanted. And then, uh, yeah, so I just started, you know, fidgeting with the drone and then trying to reproduce the results and then making it better, etc. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sounds good. So, uh, so basically, to sum it up, basically what you're saying is that for me to find these project ideas, it's not necessary that I have to look at my professors or my seniors. I could potentially be reading a lot, trying to find interesting projects that I could like something that people have done and I would just want to like, like reproduce that and then sort of try to improve that. Right. That's sort of what you did and something that you got excited about. Right. Right. And I'm sure like, right. Like, uh, even in this, like, uh, I'm sure like your, uh, college was very supportive in giving you the funding, but you like, there'll be some project ideas where you might not even need that funding and you might be able to just uh, do yeah, it yeah. without that as well as well. So like, I think that even that is not a dependency. Uh, right. Right. Yeah, sense, completely. I mean, these days, so these days, uh, I'm, I'm sure you might have heard about Google Collaboratory, uh, mm -hmm. which is just like, you know, you can just spin up a Jupyter notebook and you have like instant, yeah. uh, instant access to GPUs. Right. So it's like a major thing because, you know, you can, uh, you read about a blog, you're able to read about a new machine learning related article or something, and you just want to see how it works. And it, it could be anything from speech to image to natural language, whatever, but you can, you know, try and fidget with all that stuff. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, makes sense. So, how did you get these interns at Harvard and CMU, right? Like, like, what was the process like, uh, and what really worked for you? Yeah, so Harvard internship uh, was pretty much that you know I had emailed the professor and basically, um, so so I, I mean I was pretty sure that you know I wanted to. I was pretty sure then that, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to do research. So by that time I had, I had emailed a lot of people and like, I, so I think like I, I sent up easily more than a hundred or 150 emails and I'd received like only two or three replies. And even those two or three replies were uh, like, you know, yeah, we can give you an unfunded research internship. You're only a second year student kind of thing. So, so yeah, it, it was disappointing. And, uh, uh, in April, I thought that, yeah, you know what, I mean, I still don't have anything. So I just continued emailing. <laughs> so in, on March 31st, I'd sent this email and he replied to me on April 3rd. And then, um, so I told him that, you know, uh, if we, my summer, in, uh, summers, summer vacation starts like May 15th. So it would be like impossible for me to, uh, you know, come there officially because, because of the, of the, you know, yeah. complete visa procedure and stuff. So, so he told me, you know, yeah, we can try, but uh, I mean, if you're, if you're okay. With, so first of all, the internship was unfunded. Okay. Because it was so late. He could not, he told me that he, he wouldn't be able to write any proposal, grant proposals for me. So, so essentially then what happened was I just told him that, so he just, he told me that, yeah, let's, let's still try. So then, you know, I had, a, I had two interviews with the PhD student who he thought I can work with. And then. So that was on that day itself, so that you know we can just expedite the process as soon as possible. And then he reached out to the uh, people, uh, to the international office people at Harvard, and then yeah, so they actually expedited the process a lot for me because of a lot of requests from my side. But it somehow all worked out, and you know I was there. Uh, uh, I reached there June nine. <laughs> so yeah, that was how the whole thing happened. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. So, yeah. So I think like, this is something that I tell a lot of people, right? Like, like just, just reach out to people, like do not worry about hundreds of rejections because you just need one. Yes. And in the end, that's what you're going to like, uh, be super excited about. And that's really what's going to open up a lot of areas for you. So, uh, then you sort of did a stint with Amazon as well. So just want to talk a little bit about that. 
and want to understand uh, what are companies looking for when they are trying to hire somebody for machine learning profiles and how does somebody make sure that they are getting ready from that perspective, right? Like not everybody wants to get into machine learning to do research, but they want to do work in industry. So what is the process like for companies? What are they looking to uh, looking for in the candidates? Yeah, so I think pretty much what companies look for, if you have, so the top thing is, I think, uh, one is that, you know, your CGPA needs to be a little bit decent. So it, I think it's a, it's above seven or eight. It's absolutely fine. The other thing is, so that's like a kind of like a threshold. Too. So, right. but I think, yeah, that's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's something that everyone has to maintain. Regardless of that, I think one key factor which played a big role, especially in my selection, was um, projects and, if any, publications. So, hmm. as the more interesting projects or the pro if a, if you have a project that stands out from everyone else, right. then then you know you're uh, then you're set. Like so, what you'll see is that you know the crazy number of people will do cats and dogs classification, but the whole point is, yeah, you know, so many people are doing it. So, uh, so if you read a lot, then, you know, you're trying to recreate these projects, then I think your projects will look interesting and companies will be interested in you, in you a lot. And sometimes what happens is if you're, you know, if you go that extra mile and, you know, try something out and it works out, then, you know, you can, if you even have like a workshop publication, which is just, it sound it might sound like you know what publication it's a big deal but workshop publications it's, it's yeah. not it's not that hard you know you just need to go that extra mile and if you have that then uh, any company will stick to you directly publications and projects i think the key factor for me was projects not publication yeah right right Perfect, man. Sounds sounds really, really good. Uh, I'm, it's always nice to meet somebody who is sure that they want to do a PhD because that's very rare, right? Like, so at least uh, you have clarity that you want to invest next five, six years into something and like you sort of want to grow into this field, right? So really nice meeting you. Thanks a lot for coming. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people will get inspiration from this and they will have some clarity that if they want to do something in machine learning, like this is what they should sort of try and do. And uh, thank you so much and really enjoy talking to you. Yeah, me too. So, I, I mean, yeah, this is just a uh, thing, but I mean, if anyone has any questions, then you can just uh, ping me on LinkedIn. I tend to reply pretty quickly and uh, I can understand that, you know, not, not a lot of people have this kind of exposure everywhere. So, yeah, I'm happy to help any time. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm sure the audience would love to sort of uh, ask all their questions. So reach out to uh, Sharad on LinkedIn or comment uh, in the video and we'll be happy to sort of respond to that as well. Uh, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Bye-bye.